Okay, so today we're going to look at how to file an asylum application, uh, where you can find the asylum application, um, generally how to fill out the asylum application, and finally where to mail the asylum application. So we're going to go to the USCIS website. The USCIS website, that stands for, if you can see here, um, US Citizenship and Immigration Services. Uh, this is where you can find the application. And the website is this, uscis.gov. It's not .com, it's not .org. Make sure you put uh, G-O-V. So that's where, uh, that's the official website of the USCIS. And that's where you'll find the asylum application form. So once you go to this website, up here you can see there's a, a, a button that says forms. Click on that. And then just right here, we see it says all forms. So click on that. Now you can search for the form if you go down, but it's easier just to type it in. So it's here it says filter by category or search by content. Where it says search by content, write I slash 589. I589 is the asylum application form. So I hit search and it comes up. It says application for asylum and withholding of removal. You click. And if you go down, you'll see there's form I-589. There's also instructions, but um, the form you need to complete is form I-589. So you can click on this. You can print it out. Um, you're certainly, certainly you can type into the form, but you can also handwrite, that's fine, as long as you use black ink. Uh, you don't wanna use blue ink, but you can certainly use black ink and handwrite. So I'm gonna just open the form. And this is the same form you would use if you're in court or if you're not in court. Um, it's all, all really the same. Okay, you're gonna use the same form, the I-589 application for um, asylum and for withholding of removal. I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger. Okay. So here in the first box, if you are in court, you likely are gonna check this box also. It says here, check this box if you also want to apply for withholding of removal under the Convention Against Torture. This is related to asylum. Um, I'm not going to go into all the different legal differences between them, but if you're in court, um, you should go ahead and, and file sign this too. Okay. The next thing, number one is alien registration number, A number. Now, you may have an A number, you may not have an A number. If you entered with a visa and you've never filed anything with immigration before, you likely do not have an A number, in which case you can just put NA, which stands for not applicable, or you can also write none, which means you don't have one. Uh, but you might have an A number. If you're in court, you will have an A number, and it's a nine-digit number. So zero, zero, zero. I'm just making something up here. Let's pretend this is your A number. Um, so you would just, you would fill it in here. Let's say for purposes of this exercise, you don't have an A number. Uh, likewise, next, you need to write a U.S. Social Security number. 
Here, this is asking if you have an a, official US social security number. So uh, only put in a social security number here if the social security administration actually gave you one at one point, okay? That it officially gave you one, otherwise don't put a social security number in there. So let's say for purposes of this, you don't have a social security number, so you put an A. A USCIS online account number, this is um, if you are filing this online. Some people have them, some people don't. Um, you can also file this application online, um, but I'm gonna go through the paper filing version today, but um, very likely you don't have one of these also, and you can just write an A. Okay, so here your complete last name, first name, middle name, self-explanatory. And what other names have you used? So maybe you've used different names before. Maybe you used a different name when you came into the United States. Maybe you used to be married and you had a different name. Maybe you have a longer last name, but you use a shortened one on your passport. Whatever the case, if you've used um, a different name, you want to put it here. Now, residents in the United States. If you're applying for asylum, you're in the United States right now. So this is where you physically reside, meaning this is where you actually live. You want to put in the address, apartment number, city, state, zip code, and your telephone number. Now, maybe you don't get mail well at your address. Maybe there's some problems with your mail. Maybe there's a safer place for you to get your mail. In that case, this is what number nine is for. So it, let's say you, you don't have any problems with your mail. It says mailing address in the US if different than the address item in number eight. So if it's the same, like there's no problem with your mail, you can write same as above. But uh, let's say uh, you want your mail, all your notices to go somewhere else. This is your opportunity to put in a different address. So let's say, for example, uh, the applications are going to RIF, which is this organization. So you could write RIF and then whatever the street number is, I'm just making something up, 100 Main Street, uh, New York, New York, you know, uh, zero, 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 whatever. Um, so again, this is only if there's um, a different address that you want to get your mail at. Okay, so let's erase this. Okay, uh, the next one is your gender. Um, there's the options for male and female. Um, you know, if you are uh, trans, you, you, you have to choose one here. So, um, you know, you could either go by what's on your passport or if you've transitioned um, and you're trans, you should put, you know, the gender that, that you now are, but it's either male or female. It, next is marital status. So you're single, you're married, divorced or widowed. If you're separated, like you're not with your spouse, with your husband or wife anymore, but you're still legally married, if, you, if you're not divorced, you have to put married still, okay? So if you're separated, don't put divorced. Divorced is only if you're legally divorced, that there's like a, a court judgment that you're divorced. Likewise, don't put married if you've been living with your spouse for many years, but you're not legally married. In that case, you would put single. And uh, finally, widowed, that means if you were married, but your spouse, your husband or your wife died. So that's what widowed means. Uh, okay, then you have your date of birth. So you see here, the, they want you to put MM, so that's month, 
So for example, today is, uh, today is, uh, that we're doing this is October 5th, 2022. So I would put 10 for October, then the day. So it's the fifth, I'm not just gonna put five, but I'm gonna put zero five. And then I'm gonna put the four digit year, 2022. I mean, obviously you wouldn't have been born today and are filing for asylum. So let's, let's pretend um, you were born in 1970. Okay. Country and city and country of birth, you know, wherever it is that you were born, put the city and then the country. Uh, and then you're, so let's say, for example, you were born in Paris, France. Okay, so then you put your present nationality. This is your country of citizenship, France. Nationality at birth. So maybe you're a citizen of France now, but you were born in Morocco. You would put that country there. If it's the same, you would just put the same, France. Okay. Uh, race, ethnic, or tribal group. So this is important if you're applying based on I mean, you need to put an answer here regardless, Latino, white, black, whatever, whatever it is. But it's especially important if your basis of um, persecution is because of your ethnicity or tribal affiliation. So be, be, very, be very specific there. Like, um, for example, maybe you're part of the Baule, uh, ethnic or tribal group, P put that down, you know, so you want to be specific there. Uh, likewise, your religion. So uh, perhaps you're Muslim, but uh, maybe you are uh, Shia Muslim. So you would want to put that down as opposed to Sunni Muslim. Perhaps you're not religious. If you're not religious, you can just put none. Um, so whatever, whatever the case is there. Um, this question asks about sort of your immigration history. So um, either you have been in immigration court, so this would be B, I am now in immigration court. You maybe have never been in immigration court, that would be A. Or let's say you were in immigration court in the past, but then your case got dismissed, but now you're in it again, but, and so you're not in it now and you're applying, then you would click this one. So it depends on, on what, what, what happened. Um, when did you last leave your country? So this is your country that you're, you know, um, that you're claiming um, persecution from. So perhaps you flew or traveled directly from your home country or your country of citizenship to the United States um, and it, you know, the time wasn't that different. Like, let's say you flew here, maybe, um, maybe you left on 10 4 2022 and you entered the US on 10 5 2022. Uh, but this might also be different. Like, maybe you left your country of citizenship where you're claiming persecution from a while ago. Maybe you left two years ago for some reason and we're living somewhere else and then came to live in the US, then you would want to put that one there. So let's say, um, you know, this person is from France, but let's say they lived in Spain for two months or three months before, you know, they would put that they left their country, meaning their home country in um, July and then entered the US here. So whatever the answer is, that's there. If you entered with a uh, with a visa, if you actually entered with some sort of visa, you will have been issued an I-94. So an I-94, uh, you can look it up. I'm just gonna go here. If you click in I-94 lookup, this is the website. So it's, uh, it's easier to just go through Google, but it's i94.cbp.dhs.gov. And here, where it's already visiting and need proof of visitor status, you can click here 
uh, you should read through this. Um, and if you agree, acknowledge and agree, uh, you enter in your information and you can get your I-94. And that number should then be put here, okay? If you entered, if you cross the border, you don't have an I-94. So then you would just put none. Uh, and here you want to put all your entries into the US. So let's say you entered October 5th, you entered through New York City, and you entered as, as a visitor. You know, a visitor is B2, so you could put B2, you could also put visitor. Uh, and then the date the status expires, that would be the expiration of your, um, of how much time they gave you. And that can be found on the I-94. So let's say this person had six months, you know, you would then put in uh, whatever date that is. So, um, and here. Uh, if you entered, if you crossed the border, so let's say you crossed the US-Mexico border, try to put the place that you remember best of where you crossed. Uh, you could put US-Mexico border. You could put, let's say you entered through Texas, you could say Texas. Uh, if you cross the border, you would put your status as EWI, enter without inspection, and date status expires is not applicable because um, you didn't have a lawful admission because you entered without inspection EB. Uh, then you have to list all your other uh, entries. Now you might have just one entry, you might have 20. Uh, you really need to try to list all of them that you can remember. Uh, if you need more space, if you go to the last page, which is page 12, you'll see here, it's called Supplement B Form I-589. So you put in um, the part. So I think that was part one. And the question, we'll double check what the question was, but um, well, we can look. So let's say you had more here. This is question 19. And it's part, sorry, it's part A1. So here, you would put part A1, question, I think we said 19. And then you list all the rest of your entries here. And you can do this for any question that you need uh, more uh, space. Just make sure that you sign it, each of these pages, OK? All right, so let's go back up. Uh, what country issued your last passport or travel document? So this is whatever country it is that your passport is of. Uh, you want to put that country. Um, if you've never had a passport, you just write NA, not applicable. Uh, if you do have a passport, you put the passport number in here, whatever it is. I'm just making something up. Uh, travel document is when people do not have a passport. Um, so if you had some sort of travel document that let you enter the U.S., different from a passport, you would put that here. But it, it's not very common. You would know if you had one, but usually this would be not applicable. And you want to put the expiration date of your passport. Here, what is your native language? So, uh, and again, this is your native language. So maybe you have a specific language, a specific dialect, and you want to put that here. So for example, let's say, I know I said this person was from France, but let's say they're from Haiti. Uh, here we could put Haitian Creole as the native language. Are you fluent in English? You know, you put yes or no, whatever the uh, answer is, you could put yes. And then what other languages do you speak fluently? So let's say your native language is Haitian Creole, but you also speak French, you could put French here. Okay. Uh, this is not for you. Now you go to, this is page two. Uh, so if you are married, you need to put in your spouse's information here. So we already want, you know, A number, passport, date of birth, social, if they have it. Uh, similar questions as before. 
And, and then if the person is in the US, you need to finish questions 16 through 24 also. If they're not in the US, you click no and, tell, and say where they are. Um, if they are in the US, you have to decide if they're going to be part of your application. So your, your spouse and your children under 21 can be, uh, can be your derivatives. Derivatives mean that, so your, it's your application, but if you get it, then your spouse and your children will also get asylum through you. Um, so then you would click here, uh, yes. Uh, but perhaps your spouse is in the US and you don't want them included in your application, then you click no. Uh, and if you're not married, you click I'm not married. And uh, if you have children, you need to list all the children and the number of children. Uh, and likewise, go through all the same information again. And if you don't have children, then you click I do, I do not have any children. Okay, now we go on to page, I believe this is page uh, four now, and list your last address where you live before coming to the United States. If this is not the country where you fear persecution, also list the last address where you, in the country where you fear persecution. Okay, so if you came to the U.S. from the country that you're afraid to return to, you put that address here as best you can. Maybe there isn't a number or street. Um, you know, it says here provide if available, but you know, at least put the city and town, department, state, or province and country. And then when you lived there. So let's say you lived at this address from um, October of 2012 until October of 22, like you lived here for 10 years. Um, if you were living somewhere else before you came here, and that's not your country of persecution, then you need to put both. So let's say, for example, in your country of persecution is um, uh, Haiti, but you lived um, in the Dominican Republic for a year before you came to the US, then 10, 12, 10, 21, and then 10, 21 to 10, 22. And you need to put both because Haiti is where you fear persecution, but you were living in Dominican Republic for a year. So whatever the situation is, you need to put there. Uh, here, you need to put your your addresses for the past five years. Even if it's even if the information is here, you still need to put it in this block here. Okay, uh, and if you need more space, go onto that page twelve as we discussed. Likewise, put all your education. Go all the way back to primary school. Okay, location. You know as best as you can the address, but at the very least the um, city, state, and country, or city, province, and country. And then when you attended there, I know for some individuals, this will have been a long time ago. It's, it's hard to remember these things, but spend some time and really remember, verify, um, because all of this information is gonna be double checked and, um, and you wanna do your best to, uh, to have all the information accurately accurate. Uh, and that actually goes into something, even though you should do your very, very best to have everything accurate when you send this application off, if you did make a mistake and you had already sent it off and you see that you had made a mistake before your interview, don't panic. You can amend, which means you can change um, the, the answer at your interview. So you can always go to your interview and say, oh, I said I went to this school from 
1999 to 2003, but actually it was 2000 to 2003, and that's fine. Okay, you can you can make those changes, but try your very best to to make sure it's correct. And then provide the following information about your employment during the past five years. So anywhere you've worked during the past five years from the date that you filed the application, you need to put that information. Okay. And here it's your mother, your father, and your siblings. So your siblings are your brothers and sisters. Please put everyone, don't, don't miss someone here. You want to put in all your siblings. You can include your half siblings. Um, they should all be here. So, um, you know, because if it's not there, they're, you know, they're, they're going to ask you questions. Well, depending on what your claim is, but um, who's in your family might matter. So um, uh, be sure to put all that information. Okay, so that's the, the first four pages are really the biographical part of the asylum application. Thanks for watching part one of our I-589 walkthrough. Be sure to tune in for part two, which is next on the playlist.